Hey, what's going on YouTube? And welcome back to all my Cloud Scholars out there. My name is Kieran Tross, and this is the Cloud Scholars page. Uh, we are going to be doing a lot of different things in this video, uh, working with different services and getting them and putting them together. And I wanna show you how all these services can have a symbiotic relationship. Um, so this is about Azure automation with tags and Azure policies. So one of the reasons why I wanted to create this video is because when it comes to Azure tags, uh, I find that a lot of clients and just students like to use tags for cost perspective, right? That's a lot of organizations are using it that way, but you can use Azure tags for a lot of different things other than cost. Uh, you can use Azure tags uh, for uh, compliance reasons to find out if a resource is needs to have a specific compliance on it or if you're, you need to do something like login. So if a resource has, you know, business critical and you need to make sure a login is enabled on it, you can now pull that information. In this case, we're gonna use Azure tags for cost, right? Even though I said that that's what people are using it for, but I figured it would be one of the best ways for me to get the message across in terms of automation. So essentially what we're doing in this video is we're going to apply a tag on resources, an expiration date tag, and what we wanna do is in this uh, specific scenario, we have developers going in and building and throwing things into Azure and cost has jumped up a lot. So, you know, what would you do if a client came to you and said, hey, you know, I'm having some issues with cost. We have to let the developers run their stuff because we need to get these applications and stuff out to our clients. But at the same time, we feel like there's a better way for us to save on costs. We're going in asking developers and deleting stuff and they just leave things spinning. So with this statement of work that we are given, this is our solution for our client. So what we're gonna do is we need to have an automation account. And with that automation account, we need to have it associated with a managed identity. That managed identity would be able to go into our subscriptions or management groups in this case, and now say, okay, let me see all the subscriptions. And what we are looking for is a specific tag, which would be expiration date tag. That is where you would have the automation account with the runbook. That PowerShell script will run in your environment, however you'd like it to do it. So you can have it on a daily basis. You can have it running every hour. It's totally up to you. And I'm gonna show you that a little bit later on in this video. And essentially what we're gonna be doing is using that PowerShell script to compile all the information for us. Now we have another option down there where it says assign tag. Now I'm going to add this tag to the resources. Um, I've already created the resources. We're working with two resources, which is gonna be a storage account. And then we're also going to be using uh, a public IP address for this assign Azure tag, right? But I'll show you how to assign it as well. And that will be one part of it. And then finally, where we would run the run book and see what resource it, it deleted for us. So this is our statement of work and let's go ahead and jump in and get started. Okay, so we are in the Azure portal right now. And what we're gonna do is the first thing is we need to go to automation accounts. So I have it up here, but you could come up here and type in automation accounts. And then once you go ahead and do that, we are gonna create our automation account. So I'll throw it in the same subscription. I am going to do RG West US. And over here, I will just call it test deletion 11. Doesn't really matter. Uh, we'll go to advanced, uh, system, system assigned, uh, user assigned, we'll leave it as system assigned. And then over here, we'll leave as public. Tags is perfectly fine. We don't need any leaving tags on this. And then we want to make sure we are getting a validation pass. So let's make sure you have system assigned. We're not going to do a user assigned managed identity. Um, so the difference between a user and a system assigned is a system assigned managed identity is a one-to-one -one relationship. It keeps your Active Directory, or I should say Microsoft Entra cleaner where you know, in certain cases you would have Microsoft Entra and you would have accounts and sometimes you'd have the accounts for you know like uh, services accounts and they're stale because they're not in use anymore. This, if you delete the automation account, that identity is going to be deleted as well. It's a one-to-one -one relationship versus a user assigned managed identity has can be one-to-many relationships but it's, it's harder to clean up in your environment. You have to remember where you created those relationships to other services. So we're just gonna use a system assigned managed identity. 
So while this is going, we're going to wait for this to finish up. And then once it finishes up, we're going to now jump over to our, oh, there it goes. So let's refresh. Let's go to resources. And now we have this here. So I'm going to come to this tab just to make life a little easier. I do have my uh, accounts already created, or I should say my resources created. We're going to delete two resources. So this is called delete me from 101. And if I go in here and I go to tags, I have my tag here, expiration date. It has the date 2025, April the 2nd. And just to show you the public IP address that we created, this one here, test deletion public IP. If I go to tags, it has a different date as well, but we I just wanna show you if, if the date needs to be older than the current date. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna go to management groups and with the management groups, we are going to see about assigning our system managed identity to this management group. So we need to give it the relationship. So I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna add role assignment. And I'm looking for a contributor role right here. I'm gonna click on next, and this is where you're gonna to go to your manage identities. So over here, we're gonna click down here, and we have one for the automation account, right? And then right here, when we click on it, it should populate, it says test deletion 11. That was the name of our automation account. So you don't really have to remember like the manage identity, nobody can remember all that stuff, but it knows that, hey, there's a manage identity automatically popped up. If you have managed identity with other systems, it will come up. So right now it says automation account one has uh, one managed identity associated with. If I had five automation accounts and each one, it would show up number five. And then here I would have to choose my automation account. So this is the one I'm going to do for test deletion 11. That's what we called our automation account. And then I'm going to click on next. I'm not going to do any conditions here. Assignment type. Uh, we believe it's permanent or we can do time bound. We want to do like some Entra or PIM so sort of situation here, but we'll leave it as that. We'll review and we will review and assign. And then that's that. So, so far we were able to uh, create our automation account and we were able to assign the contributor rights to that automation account. Next thing we need to do is we need to go into our automation account and what we're going to do is create a run book. So here we are in our automation account. We're going to come over here, process automation, and we're going to click on run book. Over here, when you come to run books, these are ones that come uh, with your automation account automatically. We're going to come up here and click create. And then in here, we're going to go to create new. And then here we're going to call our run book, remove um expired resources you can name it whatever you want if you want to call it the same thing as me it's perfectly fine and we're going to go to powershell and then you can put a description in here so uh this script will remove old or stale resources right and then run break environment we could create a new one if we wanted to um or we could just kind of keep it the way it is so we'll just leave it the way it is right now um, and then tags, you don't necessarily need a tag. And then here, and what are we missing? Ah, right here. So we can do this as a 7.2 for run, select run a run time environment. So let's just click on that one. I forgot about that. Sorry about that. And then now we're going to click on next. So let me see if I hit change. So this is in preview. I wouldn't go with that one. This is an older one as well, but we'll, we'll go with the 7.2, which should be fine. And we'll just click on select. We'll click next, next, and then we're gonna click on create. Okay, so I pasted in my script and I will put this script in the uh, description area so you all can have access to it. So essentially what this script is doing, let's walk through it. Um, we're going to apply this at a management group level. So you can do this at different levels. You could do it at a subscription level, but if we're thinking from a DevOps perspective, they're probably gonna be building out a whole bunch of descriptions, right? Subscriptions. 
So it probably makes sense to do it at the management group because if they're building out a subscription, you need to now modify the script for that specific subscription and you won't always know what the subscription name is. So it's, pro it's better to apply this at a management group level because no matter what subscription falls into that management group, you will be able to now still apply this policy. It's going to be less overhead. You don't have to go ahead and make modifications, so on and so forth. Because remember, what we're trying to do is make sure that we are working smarter, not harder. So over here, I have my management group called MG underscore dev. Uh, replace it with your management group name that you have in your environment. What this is going to do is connect username manage identity in Azure Automation, get all the subscriptions on this specific management group, and then essentially it's going to do a write output, right? So scan and subscription, all other stuff. And down here, when we get our subscription and we get the expiration date, so you can see right here, this is our tag, right? What it's going to do is compile everything into a list. And then it's going to look at the date, right? So it's going to get today's date equals get date. If you know that function, get date. And if expiration date is less than today, then it's going to write output. It's going to say delete an expired resource. And it's going to give us the resource name, right? In the output of the uh, once a run book runs. So I'm going to save this. And then what I'll do is I'm going to publish it. So once we're done with that, um, the next thing that you're going to need to do is you're going to need to go into your policies, right? And the way that this is working, you know, really the policy should have been the first thing that you came up with, but that's fine. Um, you can pretty much still get the gist of this. So we're going to go to our definitions and here we're going to take our require a tag. So you can do the require a tag on resources and then you can require a tag on resource groups. So if you do require a tag on resources, it's going to be all the resources within a resource group. If you do a require a tag on resource groups, it's going to have the tag applied to the resource group. Now keep in mind, if you try to do this and you're trying to delete resource groups as well, this script I'm giving you is not going to work. Also, if you're doing this, you need to make sure that you're deleting the resources first then the resource groups, because they will not delete the resource group if there are resources still in it, you are going to get an error message. So in our case, we're going to do a require a tag on resources. And how you would go about doing this, you do is assign policy. Here, you scope it out. So for us, we can just go here to this management group. And what we're doing is saying, hey, we need this tag on all resources right that get deployed so if you're if you do not have this tag your resource will not get deployed and then i can click on next remediation uh you can deploy if not exists which that's a good thing so you swear you can add it to stuff that's already there um and then you can have your stuff there as well so where we put our tags right here so i would do a tag right here and i would put the tag name expiration date and then that's how you would go about putting the tag in there for your resources. And then for your users, you would say something like, uh, please input the date as, you know, 2025 dash 04 dash, you know, 03, right? So you would, you would inform users that's how the date needs to be put into those tags, right? And then you would assign the tag. So I'm not going to go about assigning the tag because... Um, the policy, because I've, I'm just showing you this from a, man, uh, a manual perspective, but that's pretty much what you would do and you would assign it. So if I go back to my resources and I go back to test deletion public and I go to tag over here, you can see I have the expiration date, but then the value the users have to put in this way. If they don't put it in this way, it won't really, it won't work for you. So you need to have, make sure that users are putting that in a, in a value. So you can do this. Um, and just mandate this in your environment. So this way that people are doing it in the right fashion. So now once we have the tags associated with it, with our resource, then what we're going to do is we're going to come back to our automation account. Let's refresh this. And this is our new, uh, run book that we created and we already applied the policy. So I'm going to come into this run book and the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit start. And right here, it says accent parameters. So the default is going to be MG dev, but we can put in another management group if we needed to do that. But if you're going to put another management group, you need to make sure that you have the right 
uh, roles associated with that management group for your system assigned uh, manage identity. So we're going to click on OK. And we're going to let this run. And then once this runs, if I refresh this, it's queued right now. So once it runs, we'll come back and take a look and see exactly what resources um, it comes out with the, the right output file. All right, folks. So our automation has been completed for our run book. It has run successfully. And we're going to come in here. We're going to go to output. And you can see all the information here, right? So it lets us know uh, scan and subscription, subscription information. And then it says deleted expired resources. And it lets us know that it deleted the public IP address. And it also tells us why, because the expiration date gives us the expiration date that was associated with public IP, and then also the storage account as well. So this is just to show you how you can use tags in a more robust way, and you can have automation based on the tags that you are trying to gather in your environment, plus use Azure policies as well. So I hope the information I provided you was beneficial. If you have any questions or anything like that, please leave it in the comment section. I'd love to hear from you um, how you or if there's something in uh, that you want to figure out with for automation in Azure, uh, more than happy for you to say, hey, can you make a video about X, Y, or Z, or whatever the case may be. So I want to thank you again for watching. Once again, my name is Kieran Tross. My goal here at Cloud Scholars is to get you from scholar to consultant, and of course, consultant to expert. Thank you, and see you next time.